Friday. I'm back. I took it out. It was ready. And I will uh, show you. Um, if I can figure out how to add a picture into my video, I'll show you what it looks like. If not, it'll just be on my page. Roberta's Artistic Adventures and Favorite Links. You can ask to uh, join the page and I will accept your on there. To keep my extra gesso wet, I spritz it with some glycerin water and it has, I fill this bottle with about this much of the glycerin and the rest of it water and I just spritz it to keep it wet so it doesn't dry before I can get to it. And I do the same with just spritzing the sponges if it's got ink left over. And then I use it to uh, finish filling up these books with it. Now because this is gesso, even though it's on this really light background, when I add another paint or ink over it, it will try to resist it and make it really pretty. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use it. It's white, so it's not going to matter. And you can't see I did much on there, but there's a little bit. And I'm trying to find out where I put it. Here we go. I want to use. I want to put another color over this. Actually, I think I'll go with two. I'm going to do some finger paint. And for this I'm doing the Tropic Orange and Candy Pink. The other ones I used were the Kiwi jack-o'-lantern, petunia purple, and ivory. I love pink and orange, or red and, um, oranges together with a little bit of white. The mix of the colors is very tropic looking. These are two colors that make me happy when I see them together. Again, this is just the background stuff, so it really doesn't matter what this is going to look like. This is just for fun. And I'm going to make a wash with Cameo Pink and Tropic Orange. And then the wash I'm going to make just using my glycerin water. And I'm just going to pick it up with a paintbrush and just put it all over the page. This brush is really not the best one to use because <laughs> it's a wimpy brush. I think it would be best for laying out a bunch of uh, pigment on paper if I was doing something. I'm trying to see if I can find a better brush. Let me use this one here. 
this one should be better. It's not going to hold as much, and it's got stiffer bristles. And that's release paper, that's why it's not staying on there at all. I finally got done with my garden today. Well, I got done with it today, but I was able to plant my tomatoes and my okra plant yesterday. I bought one thing of okra, but it actually had about four plants in it. And then I bought, I think it was five or six different varieties of tomato plants. I got those planted yesterday. I'm so excited. And then today I went ahead and finished planting my um, seeds that I won in a giveaway from He Provides Homestead. It's a homesteading page. And I won the seeds they were giving away in a giveaway. And so I planted those. They were pumpkin, watermelon, um, zucchini and cucumbers and so I got those planted. I put them in some water for them to sprout and they were taking, I mean it's been almost a week when they finally started sprouting. Only one watermelon but I went ahead and planted the other seeds so I'm hoping that they'll go ahead and um, provide me some delicious fruit this summer. This is Key West. It's like a minty seafoam green. I want to do some punchinella. I love punchinella. Here, I can use this. The uh, orangey color and teal go fairly well together. I'm not trying to be perfect on this, so I'm getting mushy circles. You know, they're not got crisp, clear lines, but that's all right. that with, I mean not over them, but also going to put down some patina, which is from Folk Art. It's just a shade darker. It's getting pretty hot out there today. I'm trying not to use any air conditioning or fan. I don't want my light bill to go up. 
I have, I think, $100 on my light bill still. So I'm trying to see how many months I can go without using it all. So the only time I use electricity is actually when I'm doing YouTube videos. Recharging the video, leaving the light on, um, and the computer with YouTube so that I can upload it. But other than that, I don't use much electricity. I even uh, walk around at night in the dark because I'm all about conservation and uh, I, I use the sunlight for the most of the part of the day when it's coming through. And then I, I have extra paint. I don't know if you can see it. This extra blob of paint here. And you can. So I'm just going to pick it up with my finger. There's no point in wasting it, not even to put it in an excess paint book. Um, I can use the paint that's in the sponge to do that. So I'm just going to save that by adding it back. And now I'm going to spritz that with the glycerin water. And it will add the water to the, the paint that is still in here so that I'm able to put it in this book. Should put it on a page you can actually see it better on. It'd be pretty on here. And right now, because it's fairly watered down, I'm using very little pressure. And you can see it's still smudging. But as the water is going away, it'll look crisper. And there's some gesso on here, so when I go over it, you can see the gesso resists. these make gorgeous papers to do stamping and fussy cutting or die cutting on or to use as background pages or papers in your projects on your cards or uh, ATCs. That'd be pretty on here too. And now I can add just a bit more pressure because it's almost dry. And the other colors are now coming through, so it's not just the last color that I used. It's actually some of this color and some of that white gesso. But they're all mixed. They're not individually coming out, of course. They get mixed from the pressure of the pouncing with the water in there. It helps you get more bang for your buck. You can actually do like four or five pages with this, depending on how much you're going to uh, stencil on each page. I mean, I could still get another two or three pages out of this, but I'm going to go ahead and stop for now. Put that in the uh, cup of water. Those pages are pretty much dry, so I'm not worried about them sticking together. This needs lightness, and so I'm going to add some more gesso. stencil it through and I'm going to use the flowers and I had washi taped this one flower off that's how I got that one flower that I was doing for that um, let me show you for this piece of art that I'd worked on the other day and so I laid down the blue, and the purple, and the oranges, the pink, the blue, and the purple again. 
but I did it just one at a time. So I'm going to use on this side without that and just randomly add bits of flowers. And I'm okay if it makes a mushy mess as it goes through. And I know it's not going to be very bright white. It's going to be very subtle, especially with all the color and texture in the background. So you can barely see them. But it does add a little something. You have to press fairly hard to get through all the little crevices. Didn't get that little bit there. Just so for me actually goes pretty fast. Um, it takes a lot to uh, lay, lay it down. And sometimes I go over in layers to make it thicker. I think that's okay. I'm going to use that sponge again. <sighs> Let me put this away. So now I want to do some stamping with these. So I think I'm going to go into some brighter colors. And I'm not a colorist. <laughs> I have no idea like what colors go together. I never even really looked at one of those charts other than from when I was a kid at school. And there's been quite a few times I did a project that didn't turn out as uh, pretty as I thought it would. That's okay. That's how you learn. I love the hexagons on this. I call it a stencil or a stamp. I don't know what you call it, but it's a silicone oven mat that I cut down. You can get about four. So if you're you know, on a budget, you and three or four of your friends can go in together and buy quite a few different ones and cut them into pieces and just share. Each of you, you know, cut them into quarters or whatever. And then each of you have something to stamp with. You can use ink on these as well. You can dip them in ink and get a really nice, and it'll be crisper and clearer than with the paint. With the paint, it's not as uh, crisp and clear, but that's the way mixed media is. I'll put a little bit right there too. Almost out of paint. some on this side. And there's still some in here, so guess what I'm going to do. It's not much, but it's a little. And so now I have splats of it. And then I also take what's on my fingers and kind of rub it off. And that also goes into a cup of water to soak. When this stuff dries. It can be a bit of a challenge sometimes to get off. Oh, 
Okay. Still needing another color. Oh. I don't know. I'll try a little bit of this and see. I think I'm going to do some splatter with it. Let me find my splatter brush. Glycerin water. I hardly ever use just plain old water anymore. And I do want to get my splatter box for this. Which means I need to put these paints away. I have way too many out on the desk. Actually, I want it darker than that, so I'm going to add some black. Actually, I think I'll add... This is sequin black, so it's a glitter black. I'm going to add that to it. Because I really want something with a lot of contrast. I want it to pop. what we have so far. I'm going to let that dry. And now i got to do something with this. That will not be pretty on this page. I don't know about on this page. I think I'll add some just to see. Dry. I probably got splatter on me too, but I got all over my desk right now. I do like the splatter on there. I'm going to, not that one, not that, I think I'll look for a plain one, but this is the effect that I get when I use the brush. Sometimes I try to go around in a circle to make a, a flower. And sometimes I just go in lines. Sometimes I go in various directions all over the paper. Sometimes I like to do squiggle lines. The point is simply just to use all the ink that's on there. And now I want to look for one of my ugly pages. ugly page, I could just mash this. There, that one's not too pretty. Oh, I'm so sorry. Didn't mean to make you dizzy. 
so swiping it gives me this effect and then I like to try to mash all the ink out of there and then I stick it in the water and now I need to dry this one It's not all the way dry, but it's getting there. I don't know if you can see all the texture and color. All right, now to measure. This is eight and a half inches, so two and a half. Two and a half, two and a half, and an inchy. But this is not seven inches long, so I can't get two. But if I do three and a half, seven, and then I'd have I could cut it two and a half and then three and a half. Now this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to cut because of all the texture and layers. two and a half wide so I can get two three and a half inch ones on this one so there's one inchy and it's okay about the little edge there I can add glue or let it come off either way we'll figure that out when it comes time and I like this half of it, so I'm going to turn it around and cut it this way at three and a half. Okay, and then this, let's see, is it two inches? Two and a half. So it's bigger than an, an inchy would be. So I'm just going to leave it. I'll figure out something else to make with it. The remainder of this is under four, and I can cut it into two, and it will be big enough to be two panels for a card. This is eight and a half, so it'd be four and a quarter to make it into a card. cut. Yep. So then these two pieces I can use to make a card. I love this Fiskars trimmer. I don't know what the model is. It Hi guys, I'm back. I didn't find a whole lot of uh, die cuts or whatever that I was happy with, so I thought I would make some of those painty flowers. Um, so I have some book page, some gesso, some ivory, 
And I'm just going to put this all over this page. I'm not worried about it being completely uh, mixed, the paint colors. I like the look of it when it's a little bit of both of the colors. I'll see, I just want to try to obscure the words. That's the most important thing for me. Paintbrush and the cup of water. I'm just going to do a few right now. And I really like this color of ribbon that I have. It's like a neon pinkish orange color and it's one of the colors that's in this that would go with it and so I want to make some flowers in this color. also want to make some in the, the greenish color that I see in there. I'm trying to see if I can find my ribbon that is that if it's this one or not. No. It's got too much yellow in it. I need a green that has more blue. Or maybe just go with blue. Although I really want a pretty green color. This one. No, that one's too green. Although it does go with this one, actually. So it could go with that. So I'll leave that one out here. And that one is too blue. I don't guess I'm going to find what I'm looking for, so I'll just go with what I have. I was trying to get more colors of ribbon so that I could do more colors of flowers, but they actually don't have to be perfectly coordinated. Not sure how to get that color, so I'm going to mix a couple of colors to see if I can come up with it. And I want to get a small, small brush to, uh, that one's too soft. Maybe this one? Let's see. That's actually going to be quite a bit of paint.
I'm probably just going to mash this into um, another page to see if that would help to make it where it's not so thick. That one's really orange. Or maybe I won't. It doesn't really look like there's enough paint for two pages. But I also don't want these too big. If I make extras, I can use them later, but I need some of them to be small enough for the one I have today, the ATCs. Trying to get some of the orange from out of this one and add some of the paint from the other flowers back into it. I think this one's going to have too much orange as well. I want to take the ones that have this excess of paint and make extras because paint doesn't need to be that thick. Also, if there's not so much paint, they will dry faster. By swirling in the somewhat dry paint, I get some more texture as well as grabbing some of that paint to make more flowers. I'm going to be cutting on the line of the flowers, so it's okay that uh, some of them are getting a little close to each other. OK, 
Kimberly Bowman from Faith Unedited and Shemi Dixon. Um, I'm subscribed to both of them on their YouTube channel, but I've seen both of them do this. And then I watched today and Let's Make a Mess and I, she was using some of the ones that she had made as well. And I think she said she watched Shemmy and that's where she learned to make hers. I just want to make sure I get all of the uh, the paint out of my paintbrush. So even if it means making a bunch of little ones, that's what I'll do. Because I can use those on inchies or twinchies or whatever else. And if the shape isn't a perfect circle, I can always just cut it out into a perfect circle. The border on anything is what I would make it by just cutting it to the desired shape and size. I think that's about all I'm going to get, except this one here does still have a lot of paint. kind of dry. Alright. Those need to dry off. And I need to use this paint. And I do want to make some flowers in this these colors to match. It's a really pretty color with the uh, the rest of the colors on here. All right, in the water. And dry. Oops, I unplugged it.
while that finishes drying because it's still wet. I can feel the moisture. Yeah, you can still see it's wet on the back. I'm going to do the one for the green. And I'm going to um, I'm going to set it up on the background with a different color. I'm going to use the border of the flower. Um, brand new paint. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's brand new, does it? It's all dry and sticky already. That's not a good sign. Thankfully, I'm not painting a, a masterpiece, so it should be okay. And I'm just going to pull out that paintbrush I used before. They're still gesso and paint. I'm just going to mash all the liquid out. Okay. And then just paint. There's still paint inside at the top of the bristles, and it has to be worked out so I can maximize the use of it. Dry that real quick. And pull out that paintbrush that I've been using. This one I do need to clean because it has the other colors and the green and the orange will actually make an ugly brown color. So I do want to try to get as much of that out as I can. I just wash it in my towel. Okay. On this one, I'm going to use, and my paper is very dry, so it's curling up, so I need to kind of roll it so it'll lay flat. I don't need it curling and making the paint go where I don't want it to.
these, I'm just going to go ahead and mix four of these. And any extra paint that I feel needs uh, to finish off another one, I'll just go ahead and do that. moving. My hand is going numb. That carpal tunnel.
try using this one. No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pounce. 